So really with all of this, just listen to your body. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Um, we're only going to be holding each pose for five breaths, so we're not really like going too long, and we're gonna not we're gonna go pretty up pretty much up to Navasana. We're not gonna do headstand or anything today, because I'm not, I'm not gonna teach headstand online ever. Let's just bring our hands to our knees, palms up, close the eyes down, feel your breath enter and exit your body. Force it yet? Manipulate anything? Just be for a moment. Next few breaths, really get the breath into your belly. It may help to bring a hand to your diaphragm over the belly. Breathe deep into it. Just get that deep yogic breath. Bring a slight constriction to your throat. If you're sucking air through a straw, making that ujjayi sound. Call it ocean breath, a victorious breath. There is an opening mantra for this. I'm going to chant it over you because it's quite complicated. So just breathe and listen. Vande Gurnam Jarana Vinde Sanda Sita Svatma Sukhava Bode Nisreya Se Jagalika Yamane Samsara Hala Hala Mahashanche Abahu Puru Sakaram Sancha Chakra Siddharanam Sahasra Sri Yasran Sitam Pranami Patanjalam. Let's do an Om together. Inhale. This is sun salutations. Just gonna do sun salutation A, five rounds. So come to the top of your mat and then step back about a foot. Let your big toes touch, soften your knees, arms are at your sides, eyes closed. Just take a couple breaths. Really feel your ground. Feel your feet beneath you. Relax your shoulders, slight bend in the elbows, fingers are soft, chin parallel to the earth. Again, the knees soft, lower spine is relaxed. So if your toes touching isn't comfortable, you can bring the feet about hip width apart or a few inches apart. Just find a stance that's comfortable. You know, that samastiti is the ideal pose, but not everybody can do it on day one. And if there's one thing that's true about this stuff, is we all are somewhere different. Inhale, look up, gather the arms up overhead, touch the palms together. Exhale, fold forward from the hips. If you have tight hamstrings, feel free to bend the knees, round the spine. Inhale, flat back, really elongate the spine from your hips. Exhale, plant your palms beside your feet, step or hop back to upward plank so your body's in a straight line. Exhale, lower down, downward push up. Inhale, to the body, up dog, so the head and chest go up, shoulders are pulling back towards each other. And then press into your, the tips of your toes. Exhale, turn yourself into a triangle. Downward dog, hips towards the sky, shoulders relax, chest open. Pedal out the feet, five breaths here. So in down dog, we're really pressing into the hands. There's a slight bend in the elbows. And we're feeling that weight on the ball of our feet. This is a resting pose once you get comfortable with it, but that takes time. And then inhale, step or hop to the front of the mat, flat back. Exhale, fold, round the spine. Inhale, look up, gather the arms up overhead. Exhale, Sanastiti, arms up to the sides. Close the eyes, take a couple breaths. Just really notice the 
was difficult, easy. If there's anything that seemed really challenging, we just take a mental note. We know it's a place to work. Inhale, look up. Gather the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold from the hips. We're swanning the arms up to the side, rounding the spine, bend the knees if you need. We'll sit in action of navel to thigh. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. We're leading with the tailbone towards the sky, pedal out the feet. Or just stay in the strong down dog. Feel what this does. You may be shaking. Just really stay with your breath. Three, four, five. Step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. Exhale, arms out to the sides, two breaths. Inhale, look up, gather the arms. Exhale, fold from the hips. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back again, lower down, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog, call these sun salutations, this is a practice you will find in every path of yoga, it's one of the common grounds, or Surya Namaskar. Four and five. Step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. Gather the arms up overhead. Exhale, arms out to the sides. Loosen your knees. Take a couple breaths. Relax your low back, hips. Shins parallel to the earth. It may be challenging, but they become ease. Quite easy with time. Inhale, look up. Gather the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, plant the palms, step or hop back. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, Kathmari, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Tailbone towards the sky. Just one more round after this, and we'll get to the stuff that's a little bit less upper body. Four. Five. Front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up, gather the arms. Exhale, keep the palms together, center line. Just bring your thumbs into your chest to take a few breaths here. arms. Exhale, fold. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, plant the palms. Step or hop back. If your arms getting tired, drop the knees down, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Hips to the sky. Really press into your hands. Press into your feet. Last time here. Five. 
Step or hop to the front of the mat, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. Gather the arms. Exhale, release the hands. Arms at your sides. Close your eyes for a moment. Press into your feet. A little bit more weight on the ball than the heel. The knees are soft. Hips are soft. Feel the rhythm of your heart. Get that breath deep into the diaphragm. For this next bit, we're going to be pivoting back and forth on the mat. We'll start by stepping the right foot back and turning around completely, and then we'll do it on one side, and then we'll pivot. So, just so you all know, it'll be... Go ahead and step your right foot back, and then turn around towards the other side of the mat, so your right foot should be in front, left foot in back. Your left your back foot is turning towards the upper corner of the mat, so it's at about a 45 degree angle. The lower body is making a triangle. The hips are opening towards the long edge of the mat. They won't completely be there. We'll inhale, bring the arms up. Then as we exhale, we start to fold forward, leading with the middle finger. And then once we hit an edge, we just relax that front arm down and then that other arm stays straight up and we look up towards the left arm. This is Trikonasana, triangle pose. Yeah. Really press into your feet and feel that way. Four. And five. Inhale, come up. Keep the arms out. We'll just pivot the feet around. And we'll leave with that other hand. Inhale. Exhale, start to fold. Our heart's opening toward the same way as our hips. Fold forward. Yeah, beautiful. Arms stay up. It's a beautiful side angle plus hamstring stretch. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, come up. Pivot around towards the back, relax the arms. We'll bring that back foot forward just a little bit. Bring your hips parallel to the short edge of the mat. And we're going to keep our right hand on the right hip. Inhale, left hand goes up. Exhale, we're folding forward and twisting towards the left right side. So it's very gentle. We're probably not going very deep. Don't want to force it. Four, five. Inhale, we'll unwind. Just pivot around. Left hand to the left hip. Right hand goes up on an inhale. On an exhale, start to fold forward and twist to the left. So our heart's opening the same way as our front leg. Then the other arm goes up if that's available, or keep the hand on the hip. This is a very demanding pose, so we don't really need to go deep. Forever maximizing, that's when we create injury. We want to keep a softness about it. You know, sure, we're pressing up against our edges, but not super hard. Inhale, come up. Pivot it around again. Widen the stance, stack the front knee and ankle, and then that back foot is as it goes. The leg may be out long, it may be up close. We're going to inhale, take that left arm or the back arm up. Exhale, start to fold 
just forward a little bit. We're keeping the heart open. I'll turn towards you so you can see. And then we can bring that uh, front elbow to that knee, just an extended triangle. We're not crashing forward or back. We're keeping a bit of length here. This pose tends to remind you you're alive. Most of us feel it. One more breath. Inhale, come up. Keep the arms out. We can pivot around. Stack that front knee and ankle. And then inhale, back arm goes up. Exhale, start to fold forward. And then you can bring that elbow to the knee, to the thigh. The hips are open towards the long edge of the mat. We're in a fairly wide stance with the lower body. Feel good, you may feel it from pinky to pinky toe. The gaze is up towards the sky. And five. Unwind. And again, turn towards the other edge. Bring your back foot up on the ball or the toes and then drop that knee. So we're in sort of a low lunge. You can bring the knee down to the ground if that's comfortable. And then Palms together, our heart center. We'll inhale, look up just a little bit. Then as we exhale, we start to gently twist towards that front leg. And then we can lock that elbow on the outside of that front thigh. So we're doing a twisted side angle. Again, if anything hurts or is really discomfort, uncomfortable, just back off and imagine you're doing it. In five, slowly unwind, and then we'll work our way around to the other side slowly. Palms together, our heart center, the front knee and ankle are set. Inhale, look up. Exhale, twist towards that front knee. Start to fold forward a little bit. Be feeling this in that back thigh, front hip flexor. I even feel it under my shoulders a bit, and definitely the spine. Four and five. Inhale, unwind. And we'll keep a wide stance and turn towards the long edge of your mat. Your toes are slightly in, heels slightly out. Hands on the hips. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward. And if it's available, you bring your hands to the ground and elongate the spine. Five breaths. Just a wide legged forward fold. Padasita, Padamasana, Padamasana. <laughs> Inhale, bring your hands to your hips. Elongate the spine, then exhale, fold. If you can, fold all the way forward, bring your head to the ground, but if not, don't worry about it. It's kind of an advanced posture. Breathe. Inhale, come up. Interlace your hands behind your back. I'm just turning this way so they can all see. Then exhale with your arms or hands interlaced behind your back, fold forward. The knees are softening. Lower back is protected and elongated. Can I open my chest or reach you over my head? Either way. Yeah, that works. That, um, this is more open. Yeah, whatever feels this better. Is more yeah, that's that's usually what people end up doing here. It's like just kind of dropping all the way down. 
and five. Inhale, come up. Exhale, heel toe your feet towards each other. Take a stance, it's about hip width apart. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold forward, and if you can, grab your big toe with your index and middle finger and thumb into the toenail and breathe here. Inhaling, elongates, exhaling, relaxes. Four. And five. Inhale, come up. And exhale. Let's shake our arms out, step our feet out. It's a lot of. <coughs> A lot of forward folds in this. <laughs> Sometimes it'll kind of make me a little dizzy. I checked my electrolytes on purpose before. Oh. <laughs> uh, sometimes electrolytes will make me kind of like, if I do them before physical activity, it'll make me kind of sick. It's weird. Like, I have to take them with food and, like, whenever I'm not active. Or they just, like, upset my stomach. It gets kind of wild. But I do, like, the powder extracts that I'm mixing myself, so it's like. I just did straight salt mixture. So, for this next bit, we're going to be doing reverse namaste if that is available, which looks like this. If you cannot do that, you just reach back and grab opposite elbows. We're going to come to the top of the mat. And then a big step back with that right foot and turn towards that edge of the mat. And we're uh, sort of like Trikonasana, the triangle pose we had in the beginning. But this time we have that reverse namaste. We're grabbing the opposite elbows. We inhale, look up. Exhale, just fold forward over that front leg as far as you can. It may not be deep. That's okay. I mean, if you look at me, I don't go deep. And that's good. I physically cannot tap. Just breathe and really feel what's going on in your body. Thoughts come up and let them go. Four. Five. Inhale, come up. Just pivot around to the opposite side. Exhale, fold forward. It's kind of rough on me, but I do so much computer work, it's also really good for me, so I yeah. Yesterday, I had technical difficulties this year, I've been insane. I recorded a bunch of media when I was in Colorado for like social media, and it's like my phone wiped it all. It just like literally deleted it every day, and I'm like, are you kidding me, bro? It's like, okay, Todd, when you're telling me to just like be present and not to do this when I travel and just enjoy myself. So we're gonna do some balancing poses. These are just fun. I love balancing personally. Um, with these, your thrusty or gaze, just find a point about five feet in front of you and just stare at the ground. If you fix your gaze somewhere, it'll give, bring you a little bit more stability. So really push the weight into your left foot and bend that right knee. And slowly lift that right leg up and then push it out in front of you, point the toes, and you can reach behind your hamstrings and grab the thigh. Yeah, just hold that up and breathe here. The gaze can be at the big toe. If you're really flexible here, you can fold forward over that leg. And the way that they do it is they grab their big toe and pull their knee to their face. <laughs> Which is not me, bro. Yeah, they do this, it's like, down, and we pull that leg out to the side, Woo! opening. <laughs> you can keep your arm underneath it for stability. The left arm goes out and look towards the left. So speed bend or straight? Um, straight if you can. Mine's been just because I have super tight hamstrings. And then back forward. 
So release the arms and really point the toes. Maybe getting some shaking here. And five. Relax that leg down, stab them out a couple times. You're fine if you're on carpet or anything of that nature. It's a lot harder to balance. The more solid the ground, the easier it is to balance. So press the weight into your right foot. Lift your left leg up, point the toes, reach behind your hamstrings. If you can, refold over that leg. If not, just holding it up is great. Look at the big toe and breathe. The leg should be straight, but if you have tight hamstrings, a slight bend is fine. And then slowly bring that leg out to the left. Look to the right, extend that right arm out. Just find your gaze, find your stability. You can have the leg straight, great. If not, woo. <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> Balancing is a practice. And then bring the leg back forward, point the toes, release the arms. You can have them wide. Breathe. Sink that left leg, you can pull it back into the hip socket a little bit, it evens out the hips. And release. Whew. Step the feet out a few times. used to teaching kinds of yoga where you're doing things from like two to three minutes and then you do these like really fast things that's it's intimidating that's why i haven't really felt this much but you know it's how we challenge ourselves as we do things we're not comfortable with and so we're going to be doing a tree pose variation if you have no experience with tree and start by pushing your weight into your left foot and then lift your right foot up and just bring it to your calf See how that feels. If it feels okay, you're gonna reach down, grab it, bring it up to your thigh, never on the knee, never, never on the knee. And if it feels okay on the thigh, you can even bring it into Paschimottanasana, or the Ardhavada Padmasana. <laughs> See, the proper way to do this is you get all the way up in half lotus, reach behind with the, up, with the same hand, grab the toes, and then fold forward, which this is where it's funny. Everybody's different, right? I can totally do that. <laughs> but, so yeah, just wherever you are, if you're in that like low tree, that's okay. And just bring your hands heart center and breathe. Three, four, and five. If you're down, come up, release the leg. Set yourself up for the other side, pressing the weight into that opposite foot, lifting that left heel, bringing the foot to the calf, see how that feels, and then the thigh, see how that feels, and then if you can, you lock it over that front hip. You can reach around and bind that toe, great, but most of us cannot do this. Just want to make sure we're not putting pressure on the knee. Just find your stability and breathe. And five. Come up slowly and release. Sides of your big toes together, heels a little bit apart. And inhale, bring the arms up, and then bend your knees and sink your hips down like you're sitting in a chair. Uttanasana. I'm trying to learn the Sanskrit words to these things, and it's just not easy. We look up. Three, four, and five. Stand the arms up, straighten the legs. Exhale, arms out to the sides. Step to the top of your mat. Take a big step back with that right foot and turn towards the opposite end of the mat. 
So I do it like you do. It's just an automatic turn coming. We're going to do warrior one and Vidrasana one and two. So stack that front knee and ankle. That back foot is turning towards the front outer edge of the mat. The hips are parallel to the short edge of the mat. And then inhale, just look up, arms come up overhead, bring the palms together, five breaths here. Maybe feeling a nice stretch in your hamstrings. You can slightly engage your inner thighs, pull them towards each other. This helps elongate the spine. Three, four, and five. Keeping the hands together, just pivot around to the other side. Stack that front knee and ankle. Hips are parallel to the short edge of the mat. Two. Three. Four. And five. Staying here. Just bring the arms apart. We're opening our heart towards the long edge of the mat and winding our stance a little bit and the hips open towards the wide edge of the mat. This is warrior two. The front knee and ankle are still stacked. We're standing on this side. So the arms are wide. Yeah, beautiful. We just look towards that front finger. I'd like to gaze right at the middle finger. Three, four, and five. Bring the arms down, we'll just pivot around to the other side. Stack that knee and ankle. Hips are open towards the long edge of the mat. Arms come out wide. Really sink your weight a little bit into your hips and feel that separation of the groin. Lever two thirds of the shoulder blades are drawing near each other. The heart stays open. Three. Four and five. Relax the arms. Step to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms. Step or hop back. Upward plank. Chaturanga. Lower down. On an exhale. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And we're going to step forward just a little bit, cross legs, come seated in Dandasana staff pose. So your legs are out long in front of you, hands are into your sides, and just work to elongate the spine. If you have tight hamstrings, you can bring a slight bend to the knee. This helps get the spine long. Just close the eyes and breathe. Deep inhale, let out a sigh, <sighs> and inhale, look up, gather the arms up overhead, and exhale, fold forward from the hips, if you have tight hamstrings again, I invite you to bend your knees, and if you can, reach and grab your toes, and just breathe here, Paschimottanasana. Inhale, we come up. Exhale, fold forward. And this time, if you can, we reach around and grab opposite wrists in front of at the soles of the feet. But if that's not available, we just fold to where we can. It's not comfortable, then we probably shouldn't be doing it. There is a line, there's that physical discomfort that's a challenge, and then there's that physical discomfort that is pain. Just serving these two it takes a bit of practice, and oftentimes we learn this by hurting ourselves. Inhale, come up. And plant your palms by your hips. 
exhale and then point your toes lift your hips let your head fall back this is the reverse plank five breaths here you have a slight bend in the elbows we're really firing the arms drawing the shoulder blades near each other if it's not comfortable that's okay you can come up on the elbows like yeah, I don't know what he's doing. And lower down. I'm going to be doing a, another series of single legged forward folds. So I'm going to turn towards you so you can see you all know, just stay as you are. The first one, we bring the right foot in and just press it up against the left inner thigh. This is what? Arda, Bada, Padi, Padma, Pashima, Banasana. Actually, I know I'm wrong. It wants us to do half lotus. So take your, if you can, take your right foot and take it over the right hip. If that's not available, just into the thigh is fine. And then if you have yourself in half lotus, don't force it ever, though. You know, if it, if it doesn't feel right, it's probably not. And then inhale, look up. Exhale, fold over that front leg. Yeah, how many? <laughs> well, <laughs> we don't want to force that, <laughs> especially you having like knee problems. Like, we don't want to force that ever. You get there eventually. You know, it just takes time, grace, and patience. So you can do a forward fold all the way. I can't. So <laughs> inhale, come up, switch. Whatever variation you did on that side, do it on this. Once you have your foot in place, is your knee okay? okay. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Tell you, three years ago I could not do lotus, and now I can do full lotus. So it just takes takes practice. We call it practice, not a perfect, because nobody starts perfected on day one. Three, four, and five. Release slowly. We can always help with our hands too. We're asking a lot of the tissues of our body. Now, the Triyamuka Eka Pada Pashimottanasana. The names of these poses are just like, they expect you to memorize all of them by April. <laughs> so we're going to bring our left or our right foot by our left or by our right hip. So we're just sort of like, it's like a half rock pose. If this isn't available, you can always sit up on something, a pillow or bolster. Um, Cause ideally we're here, uh, but not everybody's, eh, they can't even see me. <laughs> Realizes that my hand was too high. Just to protect your knees. It's always okay to use a bolster. Um, just because I don't have to, I do sometimes. So like this one, if you bring the pillow under your hips, left leg is long, right foot is by your right hip. And then inhale, look up, exhale, fold. It's really feeling that elongation of the back body on the left side. No, it's off to the side. Yeah. It's kind of like a half celibate pose. Is that, yeah, if it's not comfortable, don't fold forward. Just like inhale, come up. Just grab that bent leg, extend it out. And we'll set ourselves up for the other side, bending that left knee. You know, we never want the knee to twist. The knees don't twist. They are a hinging device. They do this. They don't twist. So if you ever feel it twisting or you feel uh, intense pressure on the sides of your knees, it's probably a good idea to just back off. I think this is fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, we got to, we are our bodies where they're at, and then we can grow. And whenever we push them to things that they cannot do naturally, we break. And I've broken myself in the past via not listening. And five. Now come up. Release the pose. We're going to bring our 
left heel into our perineum, which is right between our rectum and sex organs. If that's available, if not, we just bring it to the side wherever it goes. Just kind of pretend this is uh, like the tree pose. <laughs> yeah, um, and you can always sit up on something too that helps a little bit. It just takes pressure off. And also having a slight bend in the knees. Like for a long time, I put a bolster under my knees or a pillow and it just helped that bottom leg. Um, this is a good thing. Okay, cool. And then inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. I'm only going to do one of the variations of this one because there's four of them and the other ones are extremely uncomfortable. This is Janner Shots. Janner Shots. Janner Shots. <laughs> Okay, look up, come up, bend that extended leg, straighten out the bent leg, bring that heel to the perineum, which just helps stimulate your first energy center and the fold. Slowly come up, extend that left leg, and this time just bring that right foot flat right in front of us. This is what Marish, Marichasana. <laughs> and ideally, we fold forward over this extended leg, and then we can reach around and bind our hands behind our back. It looks like this. Not everybody's going to be able to do this, so you may just fold forward and just kind of bring your right uh, shoulder to the right knee. Just do what you can here. You want to come up. Switch legs so that left foot is flat, the right leg extended. And inhale, left hand up, exhale, fold forward, and if you can, reach around and bind. If not, just fold. Yeah. So, it's my left uh, arm is going forward and then reaching around my left shin, and then my right hand meets it in the back. Maybe. Yeah, so it's the same leg, and it's like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which, again, you know, these are poses that take some time to get comfortable in. We don't do them day one generally. And they help come up. I like mine too. Yeah, they help like lock your body in place. And we switch. And this time, it's ideally we're in a half lotus and then bringing it up. But if that's not available, just sort of bring yourself into a just have that other leg bent. So if you can, bring that left foot to the left thigh and then bring that right foot flat. This isn't going to be available for everyone and that right hip will naturally lift up again. If that's not available, just bring the left foot to the side of the right foot. Yeah, there you go. And then we inhale, right hand goes up, exhale, fold forward. And you can reach that right hand around the right shin and then your left hand behind your back to grab the hands together. If that's not available, we just fold. And now come up. We'll switch. Just be thankful we're not holding these for three minutes. <laughs> So that left foot's flat. You can bring that right foot to the outside of the left foot or bring that right foot to the left lap. <laughs> if you're backwards, that's okay. And then inhale, arm goes up, exhale, reach down, wrap the hand or arm around your shin, and reach behind you, binding if available. If not, just fold forward. Yeah, it's like the dyslexic person's nightmare yoga is what we call this. <laughs> Two more breaths. And five. Unbind, come up slowly. 
Release the legs. Just bring them both out long in front of us. Shake them out. Bounce the knees a few times. And stretch the toes towards you and push them away. Big circles with the ankles. Yeah, this yoga we're doing is the one that birthed power yoga and the whole like vinyasa movement in this, state, this country. It's the, you know, it's kind of, it is a purest path in a way, which is funny how like you know, people took parts of it and just like, hey, look at that. But if you do the whole thing, it's crazy. I'm sure you've seen where people like take their hands or their feet behind their head, lock them and just like rock back and forth. This is like the one where you do that. And I, I can almost do it, but no, it'll be a while. So we're going to do one more variation of that, this time with a twist. So bring your right foot flat, send the left leg out. So the right foot is just right in front of the hip or wherever it goes. And we're going to inhale, left arm up, exhale, twist towards that bent knee, and we're going to lock that arm on the outside of it, twisting the spine. So this may be as far as you go, and that's okay. Just breathe and make sure that it feels okay. There's no twinge in the spine, there's no pain. And five. Unwind. Switch legs. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, twist towards the left, locking or taking that right arm on the outside of the left knee, twisting. This is the second to last pose in the seated series, and then we're going to do some back bends. Release. Extend the legs out. We're going to bring our arms out parallel to the earth and then point the toes and kind of rock back a little bit and lift the legs up. We're really firing our core. Five breaths. This is Navasana. If you feel a good pull in your low spine, just come down for a second and reset. We're really firing our core. down and then again arms are up pointing the toes legs come up if you're shaking that's good it means we're really working our central nervous system we're working muscles that we didn't know we had and release one more time here <laughs> This is a psoas killer. And up. Which is there like all the way up here in the book, but you know, we are where we're at. <laughs> and five, release. And slowly lower all the way down to your back. Arms are at your sides, palms up. Let your legs come wide. Or rock yourself around a little bit, relaxing. Setting ourselves up for the finishing sequence, which is quite a bit less strenuous than what we just did. So bring our feet flat, right in front of our hips. We're going to do, if you are available, we do a um, This is what they call wheel pose. Or Uttabhada uh, Anarshasana. So one variation is bringing your hands by your shoulders, your feet are flat, and we're pressing our hips and our body up towards the sky. But that is an advanced posture. A good stern pose is just feet flat and then pressing your hips up towards the sky. Just really engaging those quads, engaging your glutes, protecting your low spine, 
five breaths here. This is a bit of a back bend. If you ever have headaches or anything, anything like that, the inversions don't really fly with it. And if you're up in the full wheel, you can come down on your head for a second and relax. We'll push back up. And slowly lower down. Bring all the way down. Let's do some windshield wipers, just letting your knees fall side to side. Your feet stay in one place, just going from side to side. Well, the, you go on either side of the feet, but they're staying in one place. A lot of times I'll see people lifting them up here. And so the beautiful little massage of the hips gets into the iliosacrum. So these next couple postures are inversions on the spine and the neck. If you have no experience with them, watch me before you do it. And if you feel any pressure in your neck at all, come down. Like don't even like risk it because this is a, with these styles of inversions, they're extremely healthy because they help recirculate all the stagnant blood in our lower body and they're really good for our heart. But they're also a the most the highest potential for injury in yoga is these pause poses. So it's kind of like do them if your body allows, and if not, don't. We're gonna be holding for ten breaths on each one. So just honor your body. If you get signals like this isn't right, it's not right. <laughs> so for shoulder stand, for one, for all of it, you want the space right here in your neck. We're not like um, bending our head so far. And a good way to get into shoulder stand is start by lifting the hips up, bringing your hands under your hips, lift one leg and then the other, and just check in there. This is half shoulder stand. And then if you can go higher, kind of bend your knees towards your face, and then bring your hands to your kidneys, and press your feet up towards the ceiling. Your feet can be flat or toes pointed, and make sure you can lift your head up, but do not turn your head. If you can't lift your head up, there's too much pressure there. You want the weight distributed between your elbows and your shoulders. Six. It should feel stable. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And then drop your feet over your head. Plow pose. So it's just like a forward fold, but we're hovering the hips. This one is a little bit easier. You want to still keep your hands on the hips and keep your weight distributed that way. It's not going into the head. Again, if you feel a lot of pressure in the neck, back off. And then drop your knees towards your ears if that's available. This is knees to ear pose. Again, check in with your neck. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not. We come here to heal and grow. Inhale, exhale slowly, coming down, all the way down, just lying on your spine, arms at your sides, palms up, legs wide. Shoulders grounded. Just relax your whole body. We'll bring the hands, palms down next to the hips. Kind of press into our elbows, lifting the chest up, just opening the heart while we're still on the ground. The back of the head has a little bit of weight on it here. 
This is a variation of fish pose. Four. And five. Release. I'll hug the knees in towards the chest. Wrap your arms around them. Gently rock side to side a few times. center, lift the head up, keep your knees towards your face, rock back, rock forward, do this a couple times, and come up to sit. We'll just find a comfortable cross-legged position, arms on the knees, palms up, 10 breaths here, just close the eyes, and open them barely looking at the tip of your nose. Breathe deep into the diaphragm and be partly thankful that's over. Bring your hands beside your hips. Just lift yourself up for a moment. This is where being in, uh, well, yeah, so if, you're, if you're not in lotus, you're not going to be able to lift your knees up too, so your knees will stay on the ground for just engaging the upper body for a moment. Four breaths. Three. And release. Find ourselves up for Shavasana once more. This will be the real Shavasana. Slowly lower down, arms are at your sides. Your feet are about mat width apart, your eyes are closed. Your breath is relaxed. are soft. Your calf muscles and shins relax. Your knees are soft. Thighs soft. Your glutes and hips Completely relaxed. Your spine is supported. Completely relaxed. Your arms feel heavy. Your arms are relaxed. Relaxed, your jaw is soft, the tongue relaxed, your whole body is completely relaxed.
feel it as it enters and exits your body. And notice the subtle pathways in which it moves, the movements that accompany the breath. side to side, it's massaging out the spine. And come center, lift the head up and rock and roll on the spine a few times. It's really feeling this beautiful free back rub brought to you by your yoga mat and momentum. Yeah, necklace is kind of hurt with it. I always take my mall off first because like these things are terrible. You're like, oh my spine! Come up. I will chant the closing mantra, which I'm trying to learn both of these. They're very complicated. Eyes closed, bring your palms together and rub them briskly. Basic your thumbs into heart center. Just close the eyes down and breathe. You can join me for the ohms. Inhale. Oh. Sasi prajabya pere palanyantam niyayena magena mahi mahisa go brahmane baya shabhustu nicham Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu and then om shanti 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 om shanti 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 om peace 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 may we find peace within us and learn to share it with those around us May we recognize those blocks in our lives that we can do something about, and learn to move through them with grace and gratitude. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful snowy day. Satnam. Namaste.